So I'm going to hand straight over to you and welcome you to the Tech Connect stage. Tell us all about Data Duopoly. That's fantastic. Thank you very much for the introduction, Tony. So my name is Tanavi Essinandam, and I'm one of the co-founders at Data Duopoly. And we're on a really exciting journey to revolutionize the visitor experience in any venue worldwide. So I'm going to share some slides and pray that technology is on my side. <laughs> um, and hopefully this works. Yes, so we at Data Duopoly are on a mission to revolutionize the visitor experience in any venue worldwide. So why did we start? We found the shocking statistic that the average person spends six months of their lifetime queuing, which is absolutely phenomenal. And what's more, the average London tourist spends five hours queuing at visitor attractions alone. So we did our own research and found for the top five UK attractions, almost 20% of TripAdvisor reviews relates to queues, crowds, and busyness. And this is bad for the venue and bad for the ruining visitor experience for everyone and not enabling people to have the great day out that they deserve. So we wanted to see how could we use downstream satellite technology to solve this problem. So meet Explore It, a web analytics dashboard for the venue to see live location data of where their visitors are on site, in with it between a geofence. This is tracked at five minute intervals and it's all using anonymized data because we didn't want to be Big Brother. So we just track the phones using the inbuilt GPS capability. And there's a mobile app for visitors to download free of charge, available on iOS and Android. And we really utilize nudge theory here to try and encourage people to shift away from the busy areas. We don't want to tell people what to do, but just to let them know through little mechanisms that this area is quite busy right now, would you like to try out a quieter spot? And we can also use incentives to help make this happen. So how does our solution work? It really is a win-win situation for both visitors and venues. We wanted to democratize the information sharing process, giving value to visitors for their data, and also giving relevant anonymous data to venues to help with their long-term planning. The data is obtained by GPS tracking within the visitor app, and the aim is to provide the data insight to help with the long-term planning at attractions and staff allocation. So for example, if venues know that an area is really busy, they can deploy staff in real time to help cope with the excess load. And also, they can know about dwell time. So if you've just spent a million pounds on a brand new exhibit, but we know the dwell time for visitors is an average five minutes, compared to maybe a playground that you spent £30,000 on, where the average dwell time is half an hour. That's really valuable data going forward for the venue. And for the visitor, it's all about the experience. We want to give them an engaging, personalized, and tailored experience. So we facilitate the sending of personalized discounts to visitors to visit less busy areas. So this helps drive increases in concessionary spending on site, but also helping the visitor enjoy their day out. And ultimately, we want to optimize the visitor distribution using downstream satellite data, which means less queues and happier visitors, a true win-win situation. So how does our dashboard work? This is really where the magic happens, and data is truly at your fingertips. So we use satellite data to give to the venue so they're able to view where visitors go. And we also have an inbuilt pre-scheduled event updated with the app be an easy to use calendar entry system. So gone are the days, the moment you walk into a visitor center and you almost take in the what's on board and it goes out of your head by the lunchtime. You can log into the app, not even log in, just open the app and see what's on. And this can be updated in real time so you never miss one of the great talks happening on site. And we also wanted to give feedback mechanisms. So actually, then you can get quick on the pulse feedback of how visitors are feeling. They just come out from an exhibit and they actually think, actually, that wasn't as well maintained I would have liked. Venues can respond instantaneously, rather than waiting for two to three days for the TripAdvisor review to come on, and that can actually be quite damaging for the reputation. And the great thing about our platform is that we want it to be sort of platform agnostic. So all the data can be exported as a .csv file and can be then used in any data analytics software that the venue chooses, like Tableau, for example. So really to help venues make the most of the data obtained. So we conducted a pilot of Eden project back in July, 2019. 
And it was great to see that 95% of our survey users would use the app at their next day out if it's a visitor attraction, if it was offered. And 33% responded to monetary offer sent, which meant we had the potential to shift a third of the visitor population on site, which is absolutely fantastic. So where do we see this technology taking us? The visitor attraction industry is about $135 billion globally, and our technology is scalable. We piloted in the visitor attraction sector, but we see our technology working in museums, in airports, in retail. Think about places like Westfield. If we know someone has gone to Reese, Cowan, Millen, and maybe Coast, we know they might be dress shopping. So we can send a really targeted notification to say, John Lewis, for example, has 20% off dresses. So that's really driving relevant footfall to the retail outlet and actually giving the visitor a much better and personalized experience. Rather than blanket messaging everyone, this is really targeted. And again, it's all anonymous. We don't know who you are, we're just tracking a unique phone ID. So, an example of how we can adapt Explore to different venues and how our technology can use our plugin API to slot behind an existing app. And we're actually working with the absolutely fantastic National Trust Cornish Tin Coast Partnership as our first client, where we're linking three World Heritage Mining sites together, Giva, Levant, and Botalic. And we are loved to say that we're hopefully due to launch the app in May to really welcome visitors back and provide them a really great experience. And a key element of this project was actually linking local businesses together so they can use the data to help actually help with destination management. So it's not just on the Southwest Coast part and they missed the great pub around the corner. The pub could see on the data who might be around them. And if it's a quiet day, they might say, if you pop in now, you can get a fish and chips for half price if you buy a pint, for example. And we would love to roll out across further National Trust properties. I would see great potential and really helping the sector. And one fantastic thing is we can use our downstream satellite technology to help the environment. If we know people are walking along a coastal park and there might be seals at the bay, we can send a notification triggered at that seal park please stay away to help with the environmental concern. So using satellite data to help the environment is a really exciting thing. What have we been working with with Aerospace Cornwall? We are thrilled to say that we've been working on two new features, Cloud Tracker and COVID Alert. So what are these? Since we're already tracking where the busy areas are, and it's normally provided just to the venue, we wanted to give this information back to the visitor. be an easy to understand traffic light system. So people can immediately see where the busy areas are, where it's quieter, and actually have suggestions of where to visit instead. And our COVID alert system is actually an addition to the track and trace, not a replacement. But if someone then developed COVID symptoms or tested positive after traction, they could click a button to notify the venue. The venue would then be able to see that exact user journey while they were using the app on site. So they can make an informed decision of where they need to up their cleaning regime, whether they need to contact everyone on site or just contact the people that might have been in close proximity. So we're giving people the data they need to make informed decisions without testing. And that's really at the core of what we're trying to do, make data accessible and easy to understand. And what's more, we are thrilled to say that we are using our technology in different sectors. And what we wanted to do was actually help the universities as the previous students we know how great this campus experience is. So we are developing Explore Campus to help students and staff make self-informed decisions of where to go next, ensuring that everyone can enjoy their experience. So how does this work? Using the same technology that we're doing before, but also developing indoor positioning using Bluetooth beacons and Wi-Fi triangulation, we can say to students, by the way, the library is really busy right now, but did you know the Daphne de Moria building is quite empty, which might be a great place for private study? Or equally, if we're using the Falmouth campus as an example, we could say actually the Stanley bar is packed, but if you go to Koofi, you could get a half price coffee. So again, we're trying to route visitors to the least busy areas on site and providing an anonymized method to contact visitors at a later date. And in terms of estate management, they can see how people interact with the site which can really help with their long-term planning and budget allocation. So who's the team behind us? Myself, Tanavi, I'm a co-founder and CEO. 
I'm a chartered accountant and responsible for the business strategy. My co-founder and CCO, Erin, who's responsible for product development. And we have the fantastic Ben Sewell as a technical advisor, advising us on our technical strategy. So who are we working with? We are thrilled to say we're working with some absolutely fantastic organizations, ranging from aerospace Cornwall and software Cornwall, and we were also recognized by Booking.com, an absolute travel industry leader, as we were finalists for the Playmaker of the Year Award last year in recognition of our innovative new technology of using GPS technology. So I just thought I'd end this today on a quote by Brian Chesky, the CEO and co-founder of Airbnb. Travel in this new world will look different and we need to evolve. People want options that are closer to home, safer and more affordable. We at Data Duopoly want to use technology to spearhead this. So thank you for listening and we invite any questions. And I'd also like to say we are currently recruiting for a few new positions for sales and marketing lead, a junior developer role and a lead developer role. If anyone's interested, please head down to our website. I mean, they sound like three amazing opportunities there for the people watching along. And I'm sure everybody watching along will be joining me and giving you a round of applause. I hope they are. Either that or they're just watching me do this. Um, I'm going to dive straight into the questions. That was an amazing talk. Thank you very much for it. And we've already had a question come in from Catherine. How do you avoid creating new bottlenecks in suggested alternatives? Yeah, that's a very good thing. And the key thing about our technology is that not everyone's getting the same notification. So depending on where you are, you get a personalized notification. So if we know you're quite close to the cafe and we want you to try and go there, we might say, let's go to the West Wing Cafe. Equally, from the other side of the venue, we might say, actually, why don't you go to Exhibit A? So it really is sending everyone in different directions rather than creating a new bottleneck by sending a push notification to everyone on site. For a smart way to do it, actually. Um, yeah, good. Um, I've got a question myself. Um, I was talking to a bunch of people from the National Trust um, over the last week or so, and they're super excited about the Tinkos partnership. I know that the St. Just Co-op are now going into training so that they can advise people on how to do it. Um, interestingly, part of that Tin Coast um, pathway is where I do my weekly planning sessions in the summer, and there's absolutely no mobile phone signal there. Have you done anything to accommodate for that in your applications? Yes, certainly. So at the moment, the section that we've been working on, fortunately, for the most part, we are able to pick up a GPS signal. But if it does drop off, it will just pick up along the route when you rejoin. So it will show the route, it'll be like a static map, but when you have the GPS enabled, you actually need to see your live location in relation to the route. So it's really quite a light touch solution. In indoors, we can install additional hardware like Bluetooth beacons, but we really want people to engage with the physical world around them. So it's just something to keep in your back pocket, engage with as and when you need to complement your experience overall. Perfect answer. And what about if there's no mobile phone signal or no Wi-Fi available? Do you just delay sending that message? <laughs> Exactly. Unfortunately, we would love everywhere to be covered, but actually it's something quite lovely when you have some black spots. So for us, again, you'll be able to see the static map, and when you rejoin, you'll be able to see your live location. But you'll be able to see everything that's not um, based on the Wi-Fi within the app, but obviously the features are enhanced when you can. Excellent. Tanuvi, thank you very much for that amazing talk. We are out of time, but I'm sure you'll be sticking around for a little bit longer if anybody wants to get in touch via the chat. Um, our next session today is coming from Thomas from Sequoia. So if you want to head over to that session now, you'll see me there shortly. Tanuvi, once again, thank you very much for that really interesting talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>